In this video, we're going to answer one simple question. How fast can my PCB motor actually go? Okay, so let me start by reminding you what my ESC is made of. It has a PIC 16F microcontroller that is driving a three-phase half-bridge driver and the whole sensor underneath the stator. So the sensor tells the microcontroller how fast the rotor is rotating by detecting the change in magnetic poles. Now the rotor has four poles, so the whole sensor senses four changes for every turn. Then in the microcontroller I have initialized an external interrupt that is triggered on every rising edge, so every half a turn. This interrupt will basically stop a timer from which you can calculate the speed. Now my 6 pole stator is being driven with a 6 step commutation waveform. So one revolution will take 12 steps and half a turn will take 6 steps. Now what I need to do is map the time measured from the whole sensor divided by 6 and we have our commutation timing. So far the software is driving the motor in a synchronous manner. Now we need to figure out how to close the loop and track the speed. To do that the microcontroller has to calculate the error and decide what adjustments it needs to do to reach the desired value. Now these adjustments can either be in terms of voltage or in terms of time. But as you know my motor has a very low torque so it makes more sense to power it with 100% duty cycle and then make micro adjustments in time to slowly increase the speed. I'm going to measure how fast the motor is spinning by using this equation. Seven thousand four hundred sixty-two RPM. That is the maximum speed I was able to get with this motor. So let's try to figure out why it stopped at the speed. If you remember, in the design video, I decided to switch from a DS pick my controller to a pick 16 f The reason behind this was to try and make it cheaper. But by going for this option, we had to sacrifice memory and speed. So my main challenge was that I only had two kilobytes of program memory, which means that I couldn't use double or float for the main controller and the internal clock was also running at 16 MHz. But the main reason why I think the speed didn't go any further is that even though I used integers, the main equation was still taking around 0.36 milliseconds to compute, which is a lot considering the resolution we require to go to higher speeds. But I still want to find the maximum speed of my PCB motor, so I think the best way forward is to say goodbye to this prototype and go back to the DS pick my controller. So the big change here is when using double, the resolution for one step decreased to 11 microseconds. I managed to fit this new algorithm in 3% of the program memory, so this microcontroller is a little bit of an overkill. Now something that I haven't looked at yet is what happens to the speed if I change some mechanical parameters of the rotor. Like for example this Netfit rotor version, which has a very small clearance between the PCB and the rotor. <laughs> Next, I decided to test the tiny 6 layer version. In this case, I think the speed got reduced because of the smaller magnets. So what would happen if we use larger magnets? What's interesting about this last test is that even though it didn't make any much improvements on the speed, it managed to generate some back EMF voltage on the undriven phase signals. The final test that I think is missing is driving the motor with different phase voltages. 
I tried to power it from 3.8, 5 volts and 6.8 volts, but none of these made any difference. Now all these tests are a significant improvement from the first pic 16 f test, but if you haven't noticed yet, my motor is unloaded. So if we say add a tiny load, like a tiny propeller, the speed would decrease even further. So as you probably know, my main inspiration to design a PCB motor came from me wanting to design a PCB drone. If we take this micro brushless motor as an example, it can easily reach up to 28,000 RPM. This is the level that the PCB motor has to reach to make the PCB drone happen. But clearly it's not reaching enough speeds to implement this idea, so let's try to do some brainstorming. I think there are two issues that we need to solve for future prototypes. The torque and the acceleration. I'm not sure if you noticed, but during testing, the motor was slowly increasing to the maximum speed. This slow acceleration is happening because of the micro timing adjustments controller that I made um, to reach the desired speed value. To solve this problem, I have to use voltage instead of time to control the speed of the motor. And like I said in the beginning of the video, we can only use voltage if the torque gets higher. So the problem actually simplifies into one. I think these are all the improvements I can make on this specific motor. Let's start with the torque. The first option, um, which is the best option that can work, is to add a core inside the winding. Because it should make the magnetic field stronger and more efficient. And obviously this is what's being used in other micro brushless motors. But my concern with this option is that I need to figure out a way how to keep it simple. So adding a metallic core in the middle can easily make the motor bulky and complex to assemble. Which is sort of the opposite of what I'm trying to make. The next improvements are the 9 volt stator and the delta configuration. The delta configuration should have a smaller voltage drop on each face, so the magnetic field would be more stronger, but my concern with that is the temperature. To get to higher speeds I think we can also reduce the friction by using a ceramic bearing. I haven't tried this yet because I haven't found the ceramic bearing that is of the same size of the bearings I'm using, but if I don't find the ceramic bearing, another improvement that I can do is put the bearing on the rotor like I did for the 6 layer version, and this should eliminate the magnetic friction that is happening between the bearing and the magnets. So this is the final list of all the improvements I can make on this motor. Let me know what you think in the comments below and which one should I try first.